honestly, I don't think it was ever something I didn't consider or think about. I grew up with a family where everybody was always, it was with my grandparents and multi-generational home, where we were always giving in the community. There was always a lot of love. Um, even being a Girl Scout, being active in the church, I knew to always speak up. And there was a time period where I remember going through different traumas and feeling like I didn't have a voice, but something about just my personality, my family, I could even speak up during that time. As I started growing, seeing that other people felt they had no voice or they didn't know how to advocate for themselves, it became more important to me. So I just stayed consistent, stayed on the path and was like, let me help other people speak up, speak out, advocate for themselves and share some of the tough stories that other people have trouble sharing. I never really thought racism was real. Growing up, I'm like, man, whatever. And I was told, well, once you become grown, you're going to discover how real racism really is. I'm like, oh, okay. And just as recent as it would have been at the date of this moment, about four months ago, I was coming home from the grocery store about to go cook dinner, right? Park in the parking lot like you're supposed to do. It's a little dark outside. All of a sudden, three cop cars come up on me, like the vans, the SUVs. They get out looking aggressive, got their hand on their little holsters. And one like starts shining a flashlight, the other one knocks on the car, and the other one comes to my door, and they're like, Ebony, and I'm like, whoa. Like, this is a lot. A lot of my white friends, they got upset. They started calling on my behalf, and they're like, I'm a white woman, they would never do that to me. They would have been more polite. They would have at least checked who I was first. They asked me for my ID. When I was like, I'm not Ebony, I don't know who that is. Um, I had to get my ID, and I recalled reading an article about a brother who had to go through an experience, and he was a professor. And then I was working with some local groups out here, and we were working on systematic racism and breaking it down and creating like actual solutions and things. So I remember, okay, be calm, ask questions. And I was like, okay, I'm reaching for my ID now. It said my purse, is that okay? And I was feeling super duper nervous. Like, and I just kept telling myself, I was like, I'm gonna see my son again, I'm gonna see my son again. This would not be the last time or the way that my son happens to see me because there was so much going on. That's when I really understood the impact of racism. It's a lot that gives me hope for the future. One is just having my own breath every day. That, <laughs> that in itself and knowing the things that I've been through and experienced, definitely have a whole lot of hope right there in that. My biggest hope for the future is always my son. Um, that little dude is awesome. He's an entrepreneur, he has a heart of gold. He can have $5 and if you were struggling, he would give you that, you know? And he lets me know, oh, I'm tearing, I really love that little dude. Um, that everybody, regardless of what's happening in the world, it doesn't mean you have to be hateful. It doesn't mean you have to, I always teach people, own your feelings. Um, yeah, they're still loving people who love and give without wanting something back. And so being one of those people and then seeing my son reflect that really, really is awesome for me.